Good morning, good afternoon. Thank you so much for everyone that's joining us right now. Um, and with me, co hosty we have Paul. Um, good morning, Paul. Your side of the world. Good morning. Good afternoon for everyone else. Uh, uh, good morning. Good morning. How's it going? So good. So good. Awesome. Glad to hear that. Yes. I'm just waiting for-, for Erica to come on through. That's right, waiting for Erica. In the meantime, if you are here and you're able to share our space to get more people um, listening in, we would love that. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's give it a go. Let's start getting people in here. How's it going? Here we go, and we're welcoming Erica. <laughs> nice. If you're in the space and you're able to um, just retweet um, or share, you know, we're starting up. Um, we would love that. Um, Erica, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Doing well. Um, actually, it was a little crazy morning, just as a disclaimer. <laughs> But um, I am doing great. How about you guys? So good. I'm so happy that you're here. Oh, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, we're we're excited for today. This is <laughs> going to be fun. Awesome. Nice. I'm sorry. I was like chewing on something and <laughs> figured nobody wants to hear me doing that. So, um, yeah. So welcome. <laughs> wow. And um, welcome to our weekly artist spotlight today. Erica is here, and um, yeah, we're we're. I feel like um, we're having like a reunion after our little space that we had um, a couple weeks ago, or last week. Gosh, I don't even know. I feel like it was two weeks ago, but it, I'm sure it was probably a week ago. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Um, so, um, Erica, this is the, usually the time where people are filtering in, but, uh, we like to start off just by giving the floor to the artist, um, and allow you to introduce yourself, what you do. Um, you know, we can, we'll go into how you got here and and how you got into the NFT space, but we just like Mm -hmm. to hear, you know. Uh, the origins of your work and you as a person. So the floor is yours. Um, and, uh, yeah, once again, welcome again. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I love what you guys are doing with light art. So I really appreciate being here. Um, yeah. So who I am, I mean, I find that I'm reinventing it often. I'd say really at my core, I'm an explorer, probably and a seeker. Um, I'm, 
like pretty fascinated by life and have tended to sort of follow inspirations maybe over like a rigid path. So I kind of have a winding journey. It's a little bit weird. So I'll share a little of that. Um, I was born in Costa Rica, um, spent my first year in an orphanage and, um, which is pretty wild and wonderful. And, um, I was adopted by American parents and grew up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, I was trained or have degrees in fine art, anthropology, Spanish, kind of Spanish literature, um, graphic design and filmmaking. Um, and weirdly, here's what most people don't know. I've been a pre-Olympic soccer player and a mambo dancer. Um, and so, you know, I like just like bouncing around and seeing what, what's what. <laughs> but, um, you know, I made a film with the Dalai Lama, um, sort of a human rights film on Tibet. And for about, I guess it may be a decade or so, I worked in really focused on kind of like civil rights and, um, the environmental sector and human rights, um, just kind of like using my creativity via, I guess, photography, film, and um, design um, as a creative director to kind of, you know, just be kind of a, help them sort of talk about their their um, campaigns and and kind of work along those lines. So, and before that, I, you know, I kind of became a creative director by just one by one getting different like design jobs after I graduated from Parsons. So, um, I've been like a creative director and photo art director. I guess I did that for about a decade, at least, I guess, for like kind of bigger clients to pay the bills, like Martha Stewart, Restoration Hardware, and Metropolitan Museum of Art and stuff like that. But, but the whole time, really, like, I just love art and always, you know, all of it was like to fund art, to make art, to learn more about art. So, so yeah, since I've, since I was little, I would say that I'm like sort of a lifelong, um, art lover and pretty much experimented in every medium except I think much sculpture. Um, but yeah, so, and currently I'm working in the mediums of like mostly in photography and film and then the last couple of years playing with AI tools. Um, and yeah, just personally, I live between the Grand Canyon and Sedona, um, high up in Arizona at 7,000 feet up a mountain. And, you know, I just love exploring, hiking, dancing, camping, <laughs> um, and just have a wonderful, um, family. I'm just so grateful for my husband, Gabriel, and my nine-year-old, Orion. And and we just have a ton of fun together. Lately, it's been like a lot of soccer playing and singing karaoke. And um, yeah, so just enjoying watching my son, helping my son grow up. And yeah, just loving the NFT space as well. So much to unpack, Erica. I mean, I knew you were a soccer mom because uh, we talked about this. <laughs> yeah. But you play soccer, say what? That's a that's new to me, and it's awesome. I think you're fantastic, and now your level of fantastic just went up a notch. <laughs> so exciting. How fun. I mean, you touch on so many things that you've done before in the past, and and things that you're doing now. And then in between, I'm missing the where you entered the NFT space. I'm missing a little bit of the history oh, of yeah. what brought you <clears throat> what brought you into this life that we are now in. And clearly you have so much talent. Um and then you man, you you just you unpack that you've worked through so much. And so uh man, I have like follow up question <laughs> to a follow up question because I'm like, okay, then why AI? And then I'm like all these things, but just tell us how, what brought you into the NFT space or how you came into the space. Yeah, no. Um, well, pretty much my husband's fault. Um, just kidding. But like, you know, I, I actually, we were sort of tracking like Bitcoin um, since 2008 and kind of missed that surge in 2012 when we were like working in civil rights around the clock and working on a Tibet film and stuff. And, and then again, completely like we're just, we're sort of future as both of us. So there's like a lot of this weird esoteric stuff we were researching, including, you know, alternative currencies and, and decentralized sort of worlds and all the stuff. So yeah, that's why we were focused on all this, but we, then we again, again, completely missed Ethereum when it blew up in 2016, um, when we were starting a family and, and yeah. So anyway, we told ourselves like, no matter what was happening, we really, just wanted to see if we could stay focused on like these movements that we were seeing kind of perkle up and everything. So we really didn't want to miss when NFTs, um, kind of came up in 2020. Um, we, you know, even though at the time, early 2021, my personal life had a really big 
I don't know how to say it. It's kind of a significant nosedive, went through some hard times. But no matter what, we kind of just kept trying to keep up with these movements. And um, let's see. At the time, because I was the primary caregiver for my for my bed fa- uh, bedbound father, I couldn't really um, – the blessing in that is I couldn't really keep up with, like, steady client gigs, like be dependable enough sort of. So to make a living, I kind of became an accidental, like, art collector and sort of during the rise of the PFP – crazes and everything. So kind of a accidental PFP flipper, literally to pay the bills. So I, it was, that was a wild time, of course, as many of us know. And I <clears throat> felt like I got, we got super lucky, um, you know, cause for people who were there, it was an absolutely bonkers time. And so for example, I would buy an NFT kind of between my husband's, um, deep knowledge. He's trained at Cal arts as a technologist and an artist and like, just way better at the sort of following like the technology than I am. But between his knowledge of all of that and then my love of art and I've done curation in the past and all that as well and was a creative director. So you're constantly curating with that. Um, we just kind of were a good team at sort of saying like, I think this is a good project. So we would like invest like, let's say like 200, 300 bucks on something and, and, you know, and then often or sometimes sell it, like sell the thing weeks or months later for, thousands, like up to 20,000 type things. So we literally just out of sort of what the movement was doing and sheer luck, we kind of, um, those investments funded both my ability to be there for my father for two years and caring for him before he passed. And also let me kind of contribute to the movement by, you know, just being invested in looking at other artworks and buying them. And, and, and our plan is to kind of have like a metaverse museum down the road to kind of help support the artists. But that was, I think that was the evolution of it all. Yeah, that's wow. That is so cool. Um, it's interesting because a lot of the times, you know, given like your, do you just have this like broadcast, um, of abilities. Um, and I, it's, it's really, um, fascinating to hear about how you came into the space as, as a, as a, as a flipper, as a way to, (laughs) to, um, sustain yourself. And yeah, I, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's really interesting to hear how people a get into the space, but also how they're, they saw value in things that maybe other people may not see. And, um, it seems like you're the combination of your, like you said, your, your husband's, uh, understanding of technology and then your understanding of, uh, the, the subtleties of art. Um, um, it's really, it's really, it seems like it was a great combination and a great introduction into the space. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I feel like I have other questions, but I'm like, I'm trying to wrap my mind around, like, you just gave us so much information about. Sorry, like, that was no, 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 it is, it is, no, it's absolutely, I love it. Cause sometimes a lot of the times, well, I won't say a lot of times, I would say, um, a lot of times people will, man, I guess I am saying a lot of the times people will come in and we'll have like a hyper focused space, right. On, on art, what the, what this person does and like, I am fascinated by multifaceted people. Um, mm-hmm. and I think that, um, there are so many surprises behind what you see just people doing with their art, um, that, that make up, um, this space, um, being like given the fact that like, um, you know, I'm a musician. I know Annie loves music and she sings. Mm-hmm. And like, there are these like other lives that are happening, um, behind the veil of our art. Um, mm-hmm. and it may be lives gone by or it may be that they're still happening. But, um, to learn about the depth of people, I think is so important to understanding where the art comes from. So thank you so much for like, even giving us the fact that like you came into the space, you know, to try and sustain the household while you're taking care of your dad. Um, it, and that like, thankfully it, it worked out for that time. So like, yeah, thanks for, thanks for sharing that with us. No, oh, I love that so much of that was so well said. I, I agree. I love hearing the, 
broader story behind people. So I really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're in the space, you're flipping. How, <laughs> how does, and, and obviously you're, you're, you're still exploring art and you're creating, um, how, where did, com, where did the, the community come in? Because I feel like sometimes when we say I was buying PFPs and flipping them for profit, like we just think that like, you're just, you know, there, there's a, there's a connotation to that. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is what I'm doing. And Mm -hmm. like everyone else, that's fine. Um, but you are entrenched in community, um, here Mm -hmm. and, um, where did that start? And then how does that impact what you're doing creatively? Hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'd love to answer that. And just, just real quick on the, I love what you're saying about the PFP thing too, because you're right. It has absolutely pretty bad uh, reputation for, for like some very <laughs> understandable reasons and things. But um, I mean, there's grifters everywhere in life. Right. But, but um, you know, and, and I think people now like to hate on board apes and so on, but you know, honestly, just to put my two cents out there, you know, I really remember when that was the underground and the whole reason we were interested in alternative currencies and this whole entire movement was, was, I mean, if I'm honest, it's like sort of, it's, it's spiritual, political, all of the different reasons, you know, that you hope that, that the masses can have a, you know, the everyday person have more of a chance. And that's what we were seeing was, was happening. And so with apes, I mean, we really were there when it was the underground, the the edge of the counterculture and kind of, um, you know, it was innovating within community building decentralization or trying at least like it was cutting out middle people. It was like creating, it still is creating new channels for commerce and a lot of support. Like, you know, like I'm in these different, um, board ape groups and stuff. And it's just, they're still just so wonderful. I mean, they're just basically, they're saying, okay, you can use this IP, you can use this intellectual property and, and sort of make your brand with it. And then other people who also thought this was a good idea at the beginning, you know, are like, okay, let's, let's buy that coffee. Let's get those t-shirts. You know, my, we got like my, we got my husband, like these like board ape shorts at target, you know, <laughs> like after we lost everything we own and we're like, Oh good. We have board ape. So I don't know. I just, I just wanted to put out there. I think they think part of the art community maybe is missing a little of what the other part of our communities are doing. That's actually, it's not high art always. It's not exactly the same thing we're doing, but it's very valuable, I think. And, um, and I think if there's more of a round table and kind of seeing like what other people are doing, that's valuable. I just think that's part of, you know, one thing that comes to mind based on what you were saying, part of what the community, I think, could do in the future is just kind of reach across and, and say, what, what are those weird apes doing anyway? But no, I, um, let's see, in terms of you, the community impact, you said an influence creativity. I think to, I think, well, first of all, in terms of time, it is a, it is a commitment that a ton of people, all of the people in this room, you know, are making and we're all doing this for each other and with each other. And it's really, really powerful. So I think that like, but, but yeah, it is time. So to really be here showing up, to spaces, curating. Um, I also run a show of my own called Art Lovers Lounge, you know, and it's, and I wish I was like faster at it, but it takes time to, you know, like find the people and, and come up with some questions and, you know, design invites and all that. So I, it is, it is time, but I, I really am like a deep believer in the power of community at the end of the day. Like I think, you know, as I mentioned, I kind of have worked in civil rights and human rights. And, and so I've kind of learned a lot about from people who really knew about the power of community building um, and there's a couple people in the room here who are big activists who are incredible at what they do in the spaces they hold. And, um, you know, so I just think it's, um, yeah, I think that in this, in this community, I've just been sort of blown away by actually the commitment and the kindness and, and, um, yeah, so I've been really happy with it and the power of the people overall, you know, can't be underestimated. So yeah. And in terms of how it influences my creativity, um, I mean, it's, it's like having a free college education or something. It's like, you know, every day to see incredible art from all regions of the planet is one of the most, how do I say it? Like one of the most consistent, inspiring things I've had sort of like built into my life. And I didn't know this was coming, you know, I hoped always as I was doing this kind of work forever, I always hoped that something like this would exist. So the fact that we're here and we're working together and, you know, doing all this mutual support is really powerful. And I, you know, so I'm just trying to 
do my part, like with the shows I'm on or whatever to kind of, um, try to keep it around, you know, cause it's not like a given that this will stick around. It's all of us kind of like pitching in every day, but yeah, I'm really, really grateful. And, and yeah, it definitely has, has taught me a ton as an artist. I want to like unpack a little bit about what you talked about. Cause I think it's so important. Obviously we're in community building and, what you said about um, building this together, I think is so important and so crucial to our time, especially now when we see a lot of people exit and then those that stay behind rally with each other and for each other. You are a big promoter of artists and you do a lot for the artists. In fact, you had Paul the other day um, interviewing in, in your space. Um, I just want to know how you got started with wanting to open up a space to highlight artists, which is something that are, we are very passionate about. And I would love to learn a little bit about that. I know this is probably going off script, but you do such a great job in highlighting the people in the community. And so I just want to get a little bit of nugget insight on how you got this started, why, and how is that going? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I guess the reason it started was I was just really so in love with so many different artists from around the world. And, you know, of course, just working in the arts or in, you know, different creative capacities, kind of my whole career. I just, I know how hard it is to, to make it in any capacity. So I just think, um, you know, I've been there, I've suffered, I've you know, <laughs> like been broke a thousand times, you know? So I definitely, I think it comes from that just being like people, these people need support. Um, it's really fun. And it's kind of like, if you can stack functions, that's something I learned as a environmental activist from permaculture. Um, and it's basically like a, a whole field of understanding of how to kind of work with the planet and support it and everything. But, but I think stacking functions is something I try to do a lot in, in terms of like efficiency. And, and yeah, I was also like, yeah, I, like you said, I kind of learn from every single artist I interview. I, I, you know, actually there was a filmmaker I worked with on a project called Pangea Day. Her name is Jahan Nujim and she's one of my favorite sort of filmmakers and just creatives in the world. And she like taught me at one point, I said like, how do you make a powerful, I mean, she was nominated for an Oscar and stuff like that with her film on Egypt, the Egypt revolution. And anyway, so I, I said, how do you make good documentary films? Like, how do you make a great, and she was like, you have to like only make, make work that you are already a hundred percent fascinated by and can't stop thinking about and you want to learn about. And so I kind of always, her advice always rings in my head in terms of, you know, everything I do. So, so pretty much like, I was like, if I don't, if I'm not a hundred percent passionate about the questions I'm asking people as I have them on, then like, why should I ask? Them? <laughs> but so, yeah, I just think, um, that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, it's just, and, and so it's one thing to kind of prop the up art, sorry, prop the art up. And then another thing to, you know, give a space for people to just riff. So we'll basically interview someone and that'll be the springboard for then a conversation about whatever the thing is that day. But yeah, just love community and trying to pitch in. I, I, I love this conversation just because it, you're, um, I'm just fascinated by how, complex like you said mul multiple functions in one thing to be able to be efficient but also the way that you're moving through the communities that you are engaging with whether or not it's in real life or in web3 it um i don't know from from what i'm hearing it's just it, you you seem like you're moving through very gracefully and um oh. And in, in all aspects of the word, um, not nimbly and, but also with, um, uh, an understanding of the importance and your handling with care, um, and intention. And, um, that's something that I, th I think a lot of the times gets lost, um, in what we're doing that we're creating with care and, mm -hmm. um, there are a, a lot of the times the focus is solely on our creations, but also how we're creating, who we're creating for, what we're doing. Um, and, mm -hmm. and to hear that in so many different areas of life, you are concerned and active, um, in, in many different fields at many different levels. And it's, um, yeah, it's inspiring to listen to just because um, we don't often get 
those stories. Um, so yeah, wow. I'll, yeah. Thank you. Well, you guys are so <laughs> kind. You're so kind, Paul. No, you guys, I mean, and you're, you're completely modeling it yourselves. You know, I think that what you're doing is amazing. And I think that, like you said, I couldn't agree more that I guess I feel like, you know, the energy behind it is most of it. Right. So I just, I love that, that, um, yeah, that you bring that up. I think that's so important. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, it's coming through, it's coming through and, and how you speak about what you're doing and, and the people that you've encountered along the way. I mean, even just the little snippets of this person and you're, you're highlighting these people and, and, um, how important what they're doing is, um, but also how that's impacted you. So it's, it's, it's wonderful to hear. Um, oh, thank you. So now we're going to move on to what, what you're doing, what you're up to these days. Um, what, um, what are you working on? Do you have anything that you've been working on? Anything that you're focused on that you, you're, you know, or you want to share with yeah. the rest of the class? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, no, I mean, outside of kind of what we talked about with the, with the, I guess we haven't talked a lot about collecting or curating, but that's, that's part of it. I'd start with that just because, um, yeah, I, I don't know if I was clear on the, um, sort of talking about my earlier journey, but I, part of it was flipping to survive and to be able to afford to sort of do all the stuff for my dad. But, but that, but the, I would say the mass of that time was like sort of getting to know artists, hundreds of artists in the space. And, and, you know, even if I didn't collect from every single artist that I wanted to, you know, I basically have like kept lists and, um, like Twitter lists or, um, or see even like, what are they called? Toby. I have like a Google, like a Toby page where I keep like artists that I want to collect to support in the future. So, you know, let's pray, right? They become a multimillionaire and I can collect from all of you with no effort whatsoever. But, you know, yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's one of the things is, is I really, I think that the art in the, it's kind of like, at, I'm going to bring this up. I've brought this up so many times, but I've been to Burning Man in the past. It's this desert festival in the U.S. that's pretty well known for being, um, a social experiment at a mass scale and this amazing art event. But yeah, I mean, the art there is incredible. And when you go like to the sort of the traditional art world, you don't always see this, that kind of fresh level of really, really sincere, um, works really. And so, yeah, so I think the same is true with web three. There's a lot of really edgy, great stuff and every sort of like generative and AI and, and glitch and all the traditional medium and all that stuff. So yeah, I just, that's a big part of what I've been working on. Um, and yeah, and then art lovers lounge helps share some of those stories. And, but yeah, in terms of my own personal like collections and stuff, um, I've been really focused on just two things, which as you can probably tell, that's often hard for me. So I'm glad to say I'm <laughs> just working on two things only and trying to avoid too many more. But, um, yeah, I've been working on, um, for the past seven years, a photographic project called Light of the Hopi. Um, it's a close collaboration with members of the Hopi tribe. Um, and so they're one of the two oldest cultures in the United States. They live in some of the longest continually inhabited villages. Um, they're up on like three mesas in the Arizona desert at about 7,000 feet high. And, um, their culture is kind of, it's, it's been celebrated worldwide just because it has really, um, rich, vital traditions, um, that are very intact. Um, they, the one thing people don't often know is that the tribe like chose to, which is also called the Hopi nation is chose to, has chosen to, um, kind of like live in a more difficult way in order to maintain their spiritual tradition. So they live in, like they could have moved to a river, a river source and so on, but um, they don't live on a river. So they don't have over, over their history. They haven't had a ton of people like, you know, sort of floating by and, and really um, altering their culture and traditional ways, like very quickly at all. So that's really amazing that they do that. I mean, they still, um, work really hard and have a lot of struggles, you know, as dry farmers, traditional dry farmers, cause you know, um, that's one of their main practices is, um, that they're farmers. And so every Hopi family gets a plot that they can, um, plant on. And yeah, so basically they work really hard to, to preserve their traditions. And one of the things they did to do that, um, was to not allow photography, um, historically. So there's been a few people, um, since, you know, the early 1800s that have 
taken sort of imagery and made imagery with them, but they have been really careful about that. So, you know, I think I just got really lucky. I was a former, I think because I was a former anthropologist and activist and, and all of that. And they kind of knew a little of that history. And then we happened to know one of my mentors was one of the people allowed to photograph them in the, in the 1970s. Um, and so, yeah, so they, it's just been like a project of a lifetime. I mean, it's, I don't know how to explain it, except it's just, it just works. It's like every, everyone I'm collaborating with that we're just in love with and they're great. They're great people. And I feel like, you know, um, speaking of like growth or whatever, I feel like they've, they've really, how do I say it? They, just so many of the people I work with are so humbling and so inspiring, very like hardworking and, and, um, you know, very spiritually oriented and, and they're seekers themselves. And yeah, so I, I, I guess I would just say that the, I give 50% back um, of the proceeds, of the proceeds back to kind of like the, individuals, the culture preservation groups, um, the organizations or the villages themselves. Um, like if it's of a building or something like that. Um, but yeah, over the years, yeah, it's kind of grown from being just like a 50% profit sharing model into like a real, um, deep artistic collaboration. So what that means, and that's a little different than I think like what a lot of photography has done is oftentimes people just kind of like, um, you know, kind of fly in and, and, you know, shoot something for a, a couple of days or a week or even a few months or something. But this is like, we're really trying to go as deep as we can. And so it's been seven years of like a ton of time without the camera. And I go to a ton of ceremonies that no one can photograph. Um, and just, you know, getting to know everyone and, um, yeah. And some of the, some of the members have become some of our best friends in life and celebrate holidays together and stuff like that. So it's just been an amazing, amazing journey. And, um, so that's that one. I don't know if you want to talk about the other one or if you have questions about that one. Wow, I just think that's so amazing. Um, what a unique opportunity you get to yeah. witness, but also experience and share that experience with others. Um, I would love to hear more about what you have working on as well, or like yeah. your other projects too. I just, I want to take a moment and just highlight how impressive that is and that you get this unique opportunity to share with the world, something that no one has seen yet or experienced. And so this is um, very unique. So congrats on that. I think that's so important and it's crucial to the history, right? It lives on because we could get to document it. And so um, congrats on that. Thank you. Well, every day I have to try to be, how do I say it? As little of a dumbass outsider as possible, you know, so it's always a journey, but yeah. And then for the other project is, um, another long form project called seven realms. Um, so last year and the year before when I was kind of so closely taking care of my dad and I mentioned, I kind of wasn't dependable enough to like really take on client work. So, um, is this blessing in disguise, but I wanted to kind of find a way where I could make work anywhere, like whenever I could find a little bit of time. And so, um, you know, it was just really lucky again, because AI tools were becoming available for the first time. And so it meant that like, um, like after I'd trained models and my photographs or spent months, um, developing prompts, like my dad and I could just sit together, you know, he would be in bed and I'd sit by him and we would just like talk about the future and, and talk about what the future he would imagine for his grandson. And, and, um, yeah, sometimes it would be like hilarious. He's very, very funny. <laughs> so it was, he's always so funny. So I think that the, probably the vast majority of the humor will c come from that and my son in the collection. But, um, but yeah, so it's, it's kind of like equal parts, um, like futuristic envisioning because I can't help it. You know, I definitely am sort of, I've had so many years in activism and sort of, um, working in those things that I, I do, I have always been sort of an armchair futurist, you know, like what, is going to exist and what are the solutions going to be for water and everything else. So anyway, it's part kind of that, but then it's also part completely not that. So it's part, like I call it hyperbolic allegory. So it's like over exaggerated, these sort of deep stories within it and all the symbol, there's a bazillion symbols that I've developed over probably 20 years. And I don't know. So it kind of explores visions of a world where like humans survive past apocalypse and are living in a more joyful, equitable kind of future and it has a ton of research behind it like in metaphysics and sustainability and energetic systems in the body so I tend to like over research and I'm like oh my god let's hope I like make money someday because I've spent so much time on it to be totally honest but yeah through surreal imagery it 
it's really trying to just explore like how we can hold on to our humanity in kind of an unknown and rapidly evolving, you know, like technological future. Wow. Oh my gosh. And this stuff. Is, and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well said. Um, at the end stuff was the, uh, icing on the cake for sure. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I am just, I'm like just kind of sitting here like smiling because like it makes, it makes perfect sense to me. It makes, you know, like, so I'm, you know, in my office downstairs in the basement and in, in, in mm-hmm. my house and, and like in, I'm alone in my room just listening to this and like, just smiling because I don't know. I, it's um, hearing that there are there are people out there that are thinking um, long term uh, as far as an application for their creativity and for their artwork is um, it's inspiring. Um, it's inspiring to hear that um, there is still. Uh, long-term thinking and patience, uh, in, mm-hmm. in application of our, our thoughts and how, um, we are expressing ourselves. Um, I feel like we're the last, I don't know what maybe you want to say 10 years or so has been, it's been, it's, it's been how much content you can put out. Right. Um, <laughs> um, and, um, I failed at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like I fail at that as well. Um, because I feel like we don't, we're like, here's this thing I did. And like, we have like 15 seconds to capture someone's imagination um, or attention um, and stop them from scrolling past something that may have taken years and years to work on. Um but there, again, there is this um, thoughtfulness that goes beyond what you're putting out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and it's how can the 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 skills and the talent and the time that I've spent um, honing my skills in in multiple areas and multiple crafts, how can that benefit other people? Um, and, um, yeah, it's really, it's really wonderful, um, That's so thoughtful. to hear. Yeah. 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 Well, I wanted to say just really briefly, like, I love that you bring up patience because I, I think, you know, I don't know. I was that three-year-old <laughs> who got beat up once. I mean, it was the only time, not really, but like scratched in the face, you know, because <laughs> someone was so mad that it took me, it would take me all day to eat my little raisin box in kindergarten because I would like <laughs> save it and have like a third of a raisin. It was so ridiculous. But, you know, like, I just think, I don't know why, but that was one. <laughs> I, there's a lot of things I, I struggle with, but I think patience is something that is kind of, I think that's from my dad actually. And like, you know, one of my favorite, I am impatient all the time, but I, I can like sort of recognize like, Oh, this is that thing. This is an emotion. This isn't like actual fact. <laughs> this is an emotion. So he would, whenever I'd be like, but dad, you know, like, I don't, what is wrong with me or whatever. He, he would, he would just have this one liner and get me every time. So I just thought, sure. He goes, he'd be like, you know, these things might not be happening exactly in the way that you hope they would or as fast as you hope they would, but they'll probably still happen. Like they'll, if you keep going, mm. just, you know, and it would like always be so calming to me because, um, I just thought it was so true. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's great. I love that because, um, anybody who's spent time with me knows that I am inherently impatient. Um, and I try my best to be patient. Um, but that is probably, that is one of those struggles that I'm like, okay, like this is, this is an idea. Like I want to do it. Like now where are the people that allow me to do that? Like right now. Um, (laughs) and sometimes we need to, we need to wait. We need to figure out, um, is it the right thing to do? Is it, you know, or can we think about, can we go deeper? And I just, I love Mm. that you're, even just your work with the Hopi people that you are spending time without camera, without documenting, you are, you are spending time to learn about the intricacies, intricacies of the culture, um, and the people themselves, um, what's important that way, 
when you go back in and you're you're given the opportunity to document, you know what to pay attention to. And that's right. that's like I right. I'm sure you you feel I mean like you made us just feel like that that is the most invaluable thing that you have is that time. Um mm. and so yeah, no, it's uh it's incredible um that you you're given both the the honor and the privilege to be there, but then eventually document and share so that people can appreciate um, a culture that is, you know, um, alive um, and, but not in the spotlight. So yeah, no, it's yeah, incredible. Right. And they have to fight to stay alive. Right. And right. To not be right. Because they're, they're, they're faced with so many injustices. I mean, people would be shocked, but you know, 70% live under the poverty line, you know, and yeah. it, like a ton of people don't have water. I think it's around 70% don't have running water because um, their water sources are contaminated with arsenic and, you know, and their sacred lands are, are contaminated as people may have seen the post I made recently, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, racism is so real, obviously. And, and just, for some reason, <laughs> like our oldest cultures, we still don't know how to sort of honor them and learn from them and, and just include them in a beautiful way. So I'm, I just, what they're giving, I just want to say briefly, you know, what they're giving is so much and what they're trusting me with is so much. So I just, um, yeah, I just feel really, really grateful and try to try to stay balanced so I can show up properly. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, and that's that perfect um, last the perfect sentence of trying to stay balanced, um, mm. trying to find balance, um, to document it perfectly. Um, we're talking, we've talked about what you've been working on. We've talked about how you found yourself, um, in multiple communities, um, that is such a broad spectrum, even in this space. Um, and you talked about how, you know, there were times when you felt like you were, you were out of balance and you couldn't, do certain things because your focus was pulled and drawn to do other things. But in, in this realm of where we are now, um, how, how are you finding balance about in being present here? Because there is this like, you know, cloud that kind of looms over us. Like, unless you're present, like you're not a real thing here. Um, which is insane, but, um, yeah. How are you finding that balance, uh, be present, here and then obviously in, in, in the other, in the other real world, uh, activities that you are entrenched in. Yeah. Such a good question. Cause I think it is I, impatience comes to mind, right? Because you wish you could do it all today and now and at once. Um, but, but yeah, I think that finding that balance is critical. And, um, I mean, I think that the main thing is trying to find any way possible to stay in my heart. Right. So, um, I think, you know, I have, I guess I would say I have like really specific routines every day. Um, so well, I'll start by saying in a nutshell, if I don't meditate, do yoga, Kundalini yoga specifically, you know, dance or sing, my life kind of falls apart. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, I get out of balance. So, um, you know, every day I try to like be mindful of where I put my energies and what kind of what I allow in, I'm kind of finally, finally learning that's really important as well. You know, being a loving person includes, I'm being all dogmatic here, but like, I feel like being a loving person really does include like truly like very important to love yourself. And I didn't, I didn't, it took me a while in life to kind of figure that out, but I feel like you have to kind of, when you're deciding on anything, also ask like, what's the impact? Can I actually handle this? Um, I'm not good at that at all. I like completely exhaust myself all the time, but, um, but I, yeah, that's the thing. And then I, I don't, one thing that's a tip I feel like is I don't tend to check social media first thing in the morning. I learned that from a, a few different people, um, who live by that religiously, I guess almost. And, um, there's something weird that I don't even understand how it works, but if I sort of, if I wake up and just kind of like be with my son and have breakfast outside and like chill and kind of just try to like go from the dream state into a really lovely life state. There's something about that. That's really special. And then like later I can go back and do all that stuff. That's like, you know, designed with algorithms to make us feel like shit about ourselves, you know, but, um, but yeah, I guess I feel like, you know, you can't destroy the ego, but you have to, you have to, or I feel like I have to work to keep it in check. So, um, yeah. So, so every morning it's like meditation, yoga, singing, 
after I've kind of just spent time with my son or with my family. Um, yeah. And, you know, and I'm, and I'm mourning still my father's passing. And so I found it even more critical, these kind of mental health practices, like eat when I'm hungry, sleep when I'm tired, sing, you know, sing or cry when I'm sad. You know, I guess, you know, generally I would say pay, I try to pay close attention to my body and what it's saying it needs. <laughs> I love hearing that. I think um, family does give you some sense of normalcy and balance when mm. when our world is chaotic. I know it is for me. Yeah. Um, and so that's so important. I love hearing you take time for that um, before starting your day. I think it's so crucial in the fast paced environment that we live on, especially social media and algorithms, like you mentioned. Um, I'm just so in awe of so much that you do with your activism and, and a lot of the things you do here on the platform with Web3 and artists and your own work. Um, and I just want to um, give you your flowers. I think you're amazing. Um, oh, you thank you so much. Friend. And I'm, I'm just honored to know you here in the space as a friend. And so I'm grateful that you mm -hmm. took the time to allow us to get to know you a little bit better. Um, oh, thank you so much. It's an honor. Oh, uh, such a pleasure. It's our pleasure. Um, what is something um, that you think as you are venturing through and you've seen so much already, what is something that you think that Light Art or Mejamo Art can do to support the community of artists that you see here now in the space? Oh, well, no, I, I think you're doing it. I mean, I, I, I think you're really doing it. I mean, you're holding these spaces to support artists and conversations within the community and like, yeah, I think like we mentioned before, the, the kind spirit that you guys have behind it is most of the game. I feel like that's as cheesy as it sounds. Like it's, you know, he, I, I think we live in turbulent times. I think it's lately in the U.S. It's been a little nutty. And, um, yeah, I think people just need community, um, and needs kind of support. So what you're doing is critical to, to artists. And yeah, I mean, I think, I think mostly that platforms like yours, um, just need sort of all of us supporting even more. I mean, as much as that's probably a pain in the butt, like, but I think more shares and more listening in and all that stuff. Like I trend, I try to just, you know, even if I really don't have the time, sometimes I'll just like, you know, if I'm editing, I'll be like, okay. And then just try to find any space that's happening. And, and if it's work I can do, that's a little more rote or something. Um, but it's really hard to balance it all, but yeah, I mean, I can't think of anything specific that you're not doing, but <laughs> But um, no, it's it's wonderful what you're doing. So that means a lot. Um, it means that we are in some way somehow aligned and target with the heart of the community, which I think it's so important for those that are listening and don't know. We do have a Discord, and we would love for you to share your work there. Say hello to us. Um, for those that don't know, we do have a newsletter that goes out every two weeks, so that we we post art on our thread, on our post, and on the newsletter from shared work that is shared on our Discord. So if you have work and you want to be on our newsletter, that's one way to do it. We post our newsletter twice a month, so it gives time um, for us. We also you know, post some updates and things that are coming up. Um, we're looking forward to new new things that we are working on and details come soon. But um, don't miss out. Join our Discord. Um, we are a community. Found, um, we Light Art is a community. It's a member of the Mijamo Art Foundation, which is a nonprofit. And so if you hear us and oh, you're enjoying awesome. this space, yeah, uh, feel free to support um, us in any way possible, mainly for the for those that haven't yet um, and are wanting to support us, just DM us and, and we're always open to hear um, opportunities and support opportunities. So, um, Erica, we just I love so that. To have you. <laughs> we're grateful. Um, at oh. this, if there's anyone in the audience that wants to come up and share um, something with Erica and us or want to give her her flowers or have some questions on what you heard, this is the time. So um, don't be shy. Please come up. <laughs> people don't have time no. <laughs> but no thank you so much for having me I really appreciate what you're doing and um, yeah fun to chat yeah this has been this has been um, wonderful I was I, I, you know the space that we had uh, a couple weeks ago it was it it um, I was like pleasantly surprised at the the depth that happens in those spaces um uh and um so i i was 
I was super excited about today just to get you um, to 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 learn a little bit more because you you did touch on what you were doing um, in that space, but also um, to hear more in depth about the, the how you're using all the things that you've and all the skills that you've you know. Um, I guess maybe I shouldn't say skills. I would say, I mean, they are skills. I don't, I don't want to not say that, but what I'm <laughs> saying is the things that have interested you throughout your life and you've excelled at, um, to, to hear how you allow that, that interest and that curiosity to bring you, uh, to find things that you feel like you can be a voice for, um, is, is really, it's inspiring. So yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah, no, That's thank really you. Sweet. That's really sweet. Yeah. And the favorite advice I ever received was trust yourself. So I just wanted to share that because it's, you know, I feel like that's what each of us ultimately needs to do, um, all the way. And I think that's one of the things that helped me the most because, yeah, you really have to, you know, I mean, because no one's going to do it for you. So you have to kind of believe in what you're doing and, and, and one foot in front of the other and trust kind of the, those small things add up and whatnot. But, um, but yeah. Yeah, well, thanks again. And I wanted to thank everyone who's here who came to listen. Super love all of the amazing artists and activists and everyone in the audience. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Erica. We're so grateful for you. So tell us, when is your next artist spotlight that you have? Yeah, you know what? We're actually doing tomorrow. So we do every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Pacific, um, 1 p.m. or 5 p.m. UTC, 1 p.m. ET. Um, but yeah, we usually, so we either interview people or, um, have like a panel. Um, we kind of keep just like wrote, it's how do I say it? Just keep inventing ourselves, reinventing ourselves as we, as the space grows and what it needs and whatever. So at like, we have done a fair amount of focus on AI art over the last couple months. Um, just cause there were so many exciting things happening and, and friends who were dropping and just wonderful things. But, but tomorrow we were like, you know what, let's just like, we wanted to hold space for any artist and any medium and just, and just have a real community space. So yeah. So I'd love if you guys want to bring your work and share it and whatever, but, um, but yeah, and it's really, it's, we try to make it kind of like a real chill space where anybody feels comfortable coming up and whether you're new at art or super seasoned or whatever. Um, um, it's all, it's all discussion and we try to focus on the art itself. Um, uh, more than anything and kind of try to go deep on like why we're making stuff and kind of some of the stories we're weaving and different things like that. And yeah. But every Wednesday at 10 a.m. we're having, um, oh, I should say the first Wednesdays of the month are, are photography or kind of lens, lens based spaces. So we'll have National Geographic photographer Aaron Huey on the first Wednesday of next month. And he's awesome. Super awesome. So yeah, so that'll be fun. That sounds amazing. Um, what an honor that you get to have um, such an amazing uh, guest in your space the first Wednesday of September. So um, I look forward to hearing in. And if I have time tomorrow, I'll jump in and, and say hello. But um, that. yeah, thank you so much, Erica. You are a pleasure. Um, if Last call for anyone. If anyone wants to come up and give Erica her flowers, this is the time. Um, love what you're doing in the community. I want to encourage you to continue to do that for the rest of the artists in the space. I think <laughs> if anything, we need more people like yourself um, cheering on the space. Um, the future is us and yeah. we make of it. And so I'm, I'm grateful for people like yourself that are doing the grunt work <laughs> behind this, yeah. space, you know, getting things done. I'm with Likewise. You. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, cool. You guys have a great day and thanks again. Thanks. To thanks, you. Erica. Much love. Much love. Thank you so much for everyone that joined us. Um, any last words, Paul? No, just, uh, I think I've said enough words today. Um, <laughs> just uh, how uh, wonderful I thought the space was and, uh, how Erica shared, um, her, her walk through life here, um, and how we get to experience it through her art. So, um, yeah, thank you for your time and for your your vision and your insights. So
Until we meet again, my friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys in five minutes. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Eric, right. last words? No, no. Just thank you so much. Such a pleasure. We love hearing and we love you as a person. So thank oh, you. Likewise. Well, everyone, have a great Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you.